Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Turk, I, I'd like to, to start with you. Um, on March 9th of this year, this committee held a hearing um, on the, regarding the death of Agent Zapata. Uh, you were invited to come to this hearing, correct? I was, sir. Why weren't you here? Do you may allow me to explain, sir? It's, yes. Uh, we had about, I want to say, eight days' notice with that hearing. Um, right out of the box, we were advised by the Department of Justice that uh, they thought there were certain, uh, for lack of a better word, etiquette rules from past committees and past department membership for things like 14-day rules. They talked about how most organizations would only send one representative, not multiple representatives, and typically that that would be the head of the agency. It was completely of my understanding and that of the SAC of Dallas, who also was not here, that there was communication not only within ATF but with the department. So who that, made the decision not to be here? Uh, I would say that was a collective decision. Um, ultimately, we were following guidance by DOJ, and I believe that SAC and I, uh, our lack of attendance here was in good faith, that we were operating from guidance from above, and we, we now, you, it, it, The chairman of a committee invites you to come to the hearing you just unilaterally decided not to show up. You didn't even inform us until I think it's less than 24 hours before the hearing. Sir, it was my understanding that communication was happening now, throughout now, that Mr. last Trick, week. Listen, we appreciate being here today. Uh, I appreciate what you do for this country. But attending a congressional hearing is not an optional activity. And I want to be crystal clear with you, as I did the acting administrator or the acting um, your boss. Uh, that it is not an optional activity. And for you to unilaterally just kind of collectively say, well, two of our people aren't going to show up, come on. That doesn't happen in any other setting, and you should be ashamed of yourself for that. Well, sir, I would say, and if you may please allow me, because you're, you're questioning my honor now. Yeah, so, I am. I am. I, I don't appreciate that. Okay? Well, I, I am, said earlier, because I, you, were, you were invited to come. Sir, I was following guidance. I'm a good soldier. I was following orders. Okay, who ordered knew, you? Who, who, did, who, who told you not to come? The Department of Justice who? decided. I want to know a name. Sir, I don't want to know the names. There's, there's so many names. I could probably list off eight names between the agency good. and the Start. department. Good. Start. Give me that. one. So you got eight names. Name them right now. Who all did, was this discussed with? Yes. Who told Sir, you not to come? Start naming them. So are you suggesting that I shouldn't follow guidance from the Department of Justice? If I, I want to know who's giving you that guidance. Sir, I don't, I don't understand how this gets to this point. You told me there were at least eight and that you could name more. So give me one, and then we'll start with number two. Sure. Mr. Raymer, he's the head of the uh, uh, Office of Legislative Affairs. Keep going. Correct? Number uh, two. There's several individuals that work in that shop. Correct? I believe one of, her, one of them's name is Jill Tyson. Keep going. There are a couple other Number three. I don't recall their name. Number three. I don't recall his name, but there was another one involved. I know that Zach Terwilliger from the ODAG's office. There was conversations with him as well. I believe Who else? This information Number was, four. I believe this information was briefed to the Deputy Attorney General. From ATF, there was discussions with Director Brandon and every one of our assistants. Number officers. five. Name office. number five. Joe Allen. He's our Chief of Staff. Number six. I, right now I'm having a memory block, sir, but I You'll give me six, I, seven, and eight? I guarantee I give you more names than that, sir, but you know, I don't, I don't when? understand when. When will you give me those names? Point. I'll give those names as soon as I can recall, sir, and I'm sure my staff can help me with that. Give me, but a, as date. I said give earlier, me a date. Give I, me a date when you're going to give me those names. Sir, I would never, ever have dishonored this committee or myself or the agency and failed to appear if I thought for a minute that this would have ever happened. Not for a minute. Yeah, if you didn't I, think there were going to be any consequences, you just sir, decided sir, to blow up. I have, Listen, I, have I, briefed, I have briefed your staff. I have offered three times to meet with you We personally. want you to brief the members of Congress. Sir, I offered to meet with you personally on this matter the day after that, that hearing took place. I've met with you. I don't. No, 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 no. We do this in the open, in the public, so all members of Congress. It's nice that you say you're going to brief staff. I'm happy we want to you, answer hold that on, right now. Hold on. We want you to brief members of Congress. I'm doing that Not right behind now, the closed doors, either. You were invited here for a purpose. Now, I appreciate you giving me those names. Sir, I came here. I, I came here as a good, honorable person, and you, you, you admitted that you challenged my honor. I do not appreciate that. I operated in good faith. I had operating good faith. You didn't show operation. up. I was, sir. I was told that it was an invitation, as Director Brandon explained. <laughs> I did not know that that was not optional. I would have happily, 
I would have happily gone against Department of Justice guidelines and been here that day. I've even discussed it with Inspector General Horowitz. Everyone that I've ever talked to about this understands precisely what happened that day. Yet you want to get your 15 seconds of YouTube minute time to challenge my, my honor. You know that night, sir, I had to call my sister. My sister and my brother worked for ICE. It was portrayed that I failed to testify. You did. Before, before That's hearing. the fact. You did not fail, sir. I was that is the guidance. fact. You I failed to testify. Guidance. I was following guidance. I would never dishonor In fact, the memory Mr. Brandon, of ICE agent that way. Mr. This is what Mr. Brandon said. Well, the decision is theirs voluntarily. To let you know, Mr. Chairman, I did not order them not to be here, and no one that I know of from the department ordered them not to be here. Is that correct or incorrect? Sir, it's my understanding that that was the first time he was ever made aware of that morning. I think he got caught off guard, and I believe you had some words with is him that right accurate? before the hearing started. I it's not know. completely accurate, no. It, so what Mr. Brandon testified he, to is not accurate. What he said accurate. was, well, it is true to the extent, no, I was not ordered not to come. No one needed to order me, sir. I, so, all I need to be is told I don't need direct orders. I didn't need your subpoena. If I would have known so, I needed to be here, I would have been here. That's why you were invited to come testify. Was it your voluntary de decision to do it or not do it? No, sir. I was following guidance. Okay. I, I'm, to the members of this committee, it's stunning that we have to take sit now six minutes to go through this. Uh, stunning to me that you're challenging my entire career, sir, over a thing that's quite obvious to me. didn't challenge your entire me. career. I started yes, off by sir. saying you we appreciate everything you do. Sir, you, but when you, you're, you, no, you hold on. My honor. When I'm asking you a question, you're going to listen, okay? It, I thanked you for your service to this country. You've done innumerable things that we can't even name here throughout a, a long and distinguished career. That's why you're in a senior position. But when you are invited to Congress, it is not an optional activity. You can't separate my honor from what I do for my career and my <laughs> life, to, sir, to your scenario that you're trying to point out. They're one and the same, sir. They are one and the same. Okay. Well, I'm not here to disparage your entire career based on one incident. I'm here to say that that one incident was a really, really bad decision. And we're tired of people saying, well, I'll brief staff or I'll talk to you privately. When we're trying to do it in the open light of day, we have very valuable time and lots of important things to deal with here. That's why when you are invited to Congress, you're expected to show up. Now, if I have to issue you subpoenas to do so, then we will do that. And we appreciate you being here today. But we shouldn't have to go through that. Right, I shouldn't right, have to go to the U.S. Marshals to go deliver you a thing. And for you to suggest that as the chairman of the committee, I'm just here to get a YouTube moment? Are you kidding me? Sir, I can assure you in the future. You don't that think that the, the, the value that we're trying to do on these, these cases is of value to the American people. When you it hide information, right. when you hide information, you don't provide it to the United States Congress, you're having massive problems, and we can't get the answers to the questions that we have. There's a reason why I do have to issue the subpoenas, and these two agencies, DEA and ATF, I love the men and women who do this, but the management, I got a serious problem with. That's why you're getting a gentleman's C from the Inspector General. That's why we're doing these types of hearings is because you do need to be held accountable. And when you're invited to Congress, you don't sit around and have a group and say, well, it's probably best in our best interest not to show up. We act in the best interest of the American people, and you don't respect that. That's why you didn't show up. Sir, I do respect that tremendously, and I can assure you that in the future, regardless of what guidance I'm given from the Department of Justice, I will be very responsive to this committee. I can guarantee you that. Whether and we understand each other. Or whether it's records. Oh, yes, sir. I, I, I absolutely value the role of oversight. It's critical. We have to be accountable to the American people, sir. I, didn't ne I never intended for this to be a personal issue. This is business. Unfortunately, it became a personal issue. Hey, I'm, I'm here. I will be held accountable for ATF. I'm the second in command of ATF, even though I'm acting. I'm happy to hold to be accountable to the agency for anything that happens. You all need something on this committee. You name it, you got it. We'll see. Yield back.